Bonjour and welcome here to pierrosini.com, the wine show. And as you can see, today I'm not alone. I have a person next to me who is a person who, who, is a, who has a Greek name. Correct. Who, yeah, who lives in, in, in France, in, in the Champagne region. But, uh, and uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Well, I do have a Greek name, but I was born and raised uh, here in Champagne. Actually, my grandparents on my mother's side had a small vineyard uh, in the Montagne de Reims area where uh, they used to grow Chardonnay. Okay. So from very young, I have been drinking Champagne. Okay. Always in moderation. Yeah. Uh, made from Chardonnay. So joining Renard four years ago uh, was obviously a real pleasure for me. And I've been doing this job as a cellar master or chef de cave or kellermeister in German. Okay. Um, for Renard, which is um, a very interesting position. Uh, the best part of the job is probably to create the wines and be responsible of the okay. style yeah. of the house. Uh, but there's also a lot of aspects, you know, about, about the, the, this job, I mean, from, from uh, supervising harvest, yeah, yeah. Uh, fermentations, uh, seeing the wines being released, doing some promotion like we are doing today, talking yeah. about the wines, which is always great. Okay, so it's a very big, uh, huge responsibility, you know, for creating the, the cuvées and to make, of course, Tom Ruina, which is a re really uh, prestigious uh, cuvée. Yeah. yeah, well, I think the responsibility, ultimately, is to make our um, consumers happy, yeah. people who will be drinking champagne. And it's a, it's a pleasure and a responsibility at the same time because it's a, you know, how many jobs do, do you please people when, with everything you do? So this is part of the job is to, yeah. uh, is to make people who, who, who you know, love Renard keep loving it even more. And, and of course, in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, Don Renard, it's to craft the best champagne possible since we do have access to fantastic vineyards and fantastic grapes, uh, it's, it's definitely possible, but we really try to push it further and okay. to push the Rina experience at the most uh, you know, highest level. Let's go deeper into the details. Like we, have, we are going to taste today the Blanc de Blanc, right. which is a non-vintage. Non-vintage. Um, so, and uh, Rosé Brut. Absolutely. Okay, and uh, um, Dom, Dom Rina Blanc de Blanc. Um, so let me ask you some questions. It's like uh, the Dom Rina, of course, is like it's a Grand Cru. The all grapes it come from It is made from Cruz. only Grand Cru vineyards. Yeah? Uh, that's correct. And uh, and um, the non-vintage Blanc de Blanc and yeah. Rosé. They're, yeah. they're made mostly from Premier Cru, not entirely. Okay. But mostly from Premier Cru vineyards to have a very very good quality base. Yeah. But in order to give them the style they have, which we're going to discover together. Uh, we also need to source grapes in, in other areas, which, you know, we bring different components okay. for the final balance of, the, uh, of those champagnes. Okay, we see now here on the map, uh, you see the, um, the, okay, you see the uh, Vallée du Marne, you see... Um, uh, uh, the Montagne de Reims. Montagne de Reims. And Côte de Blanc, Côte de Blanc, where the best Chardonnays are okay. found. Can you tell me just uh, three or four uh, Grand Cruz? From well, for Don Ruinard, uh, we use about two thirds of the grapes from uh, the Côte des Blancs, which is the, you know, yeah. the kingdom of Chardonnay. Yeah. And names like Chouilly, okay. um, Cramont, uh, or rather Avis more than Cramont, and Le Ménil, for okay. instance, we use. But we also use Chardonnay from La Montagne de Reims, which is uh, not a, no, an area known for Chardonnay, mostly for Pinot Noir, yet there is some Chardonnay to be found, especially on the northern side, okay. near Sidry, which is a very important village for us because the first grapes probably were for the house were from that vi that village, Sidri. Okay, so um, I have to tell you, I, I drive. I wake up this morning very early to come here to Champagne. I was driving like a hellraiser, and uh, when I um, uh, yeah, when I entered the Champagne region, you just what you get the catch of the of the uh, of the soils, mm -hmm. very wide. It's the this is for, famous for the Champagne region also. It's, yeah, absolutely. It's a chalky soil. Pure chalk, you know, extremely pure. Uh, so it's a very poor soil, which is always good for vineyards because, yeah. you know, the, the vines has to strive to survive, yeah. and, and they this way they usually give better quality grapes. Struggling. Um, not all champagne 
is actually have chalk on, you know, on like superficial yeah, chalk. Yeah. There's, you can find also, depending on the area, a bit of sand, a bit of clay. But the best vineyards, the Grand Cru vineyards and the Premier Cru vineyards, they really, for most of them, yeah. lie on pure chalk. And, and that makes a big difference. And what can you explain uh, for, for the audience? What, what is the uh, f final um, effect of the soil in the wine? Is it just for to keep the acidity better? No, no, this or? is much more complicated than that. Yeah. I think I don't think we can go through you know a short interview and, and explain everything. Okay. What, what chalk has chalk is a fantastic rock because it it can capture um, the water, water during the rainy days. So yeah. during winter, here we had a very good winter, lots yeah. of rain, and, sh and and chalk can absorb 40% percent of water. So there will never be an excess of rain, an excess of water. Uh, in, in chalk. But then when it becomes dry, and, and we've been having a drought for almost two months now, yeah. the vineyards are not suffering. Okay. Because by capillarity, the, um, the water will be released very, very uh, gradually to the, to the vineyard. So they, won't, they will suffer, they won't, they won't really suffer, they will strive a little bit, okay. but, but you know, uh, vineyard will grow uh, quite well even in, in, uh, in, in dry years. Okay. So it's a, it's a water regulator. And, and then uh, as being very poor, it's also excellent because the vineyard will never grow you know, too much, there's not too much vigor. And this is also very important for the quality of the final grapes. So we're going to taste the next wines, okay? We start with the Blanc de Blanc, which is... Uh, Obviously, 100% uh, Chardonnay uh, grapes. Uh, first thing, you, you saw the, the, the bottles were stored in a, or chilled perfectly with a, about a third of ice, two thirds of water, and, and you leave the bottle for 20 minutes and they reach a temperature of eight degrees, okay. which is perfect. Now, by the time you put it in the glass, it will come up to uh, maybe nine, 10 degrees, which is great. Uh, so we can now today, uh, we can show the audience how to open a champagne bottle. Well, it's very bottle. easy. You, yeah. you have to grab yeah. the oh. bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, you have to remove the uh, foil yeah. parts and there's sometimes something yeah. to help you to do that. So here you have a, a very clear cut. Then the trick is to, um, if you don't want to have any problem, is to, to grab the bottle like this. Yeah. Put your um, left or right hand, depending on, on, your, uh, on yourself. Um, put the thumb yeah. on the cork so that it won't escape. You just untwist the cage. Okay. There's always six. Six. Loosen it up. And then... You Amazing. grab the cork and yeah. turn the bottle. Instead of grabbing the bottle and turning the cork, okay. which is more difficult, you yeah. hold the cork and just turn the bottle. Softly, yeah. Sent softly, and it will gently come out. I leave the cage because some people don't take it away, yeah, but you can bring it down. Yeah, yeah. And then you can feel, you can feel, can you see it? You can see the, the, the pressure yeah. pushing the cork. It's like uh, the pressure in the bottle is like uh, the pressure like in the truck wheel, right? It's like uh, it's six. three times, yeah, six bars, so yeah. three times the pressure of a car. So it's pretty high. So and then at the end, when you, when you see it's coming, you just make a little uh, twist with your, um, with your hand like this, and Oop. you get a perfect sound, Okay. and nothing is lost, almost nothing. Yeah. With a beautiful sound, of course. Always with champagne, it's uh, something expected. Yeah. So um, for, for, for these wines, the, the, the grapes, they come from, um, okay, you said it before, from Premier Cruz, a little bit Grand Cru also? No, no Grand Cru. Um, okay. Exceptionally, but normally uh, we don't use Grand Cru for the Blanc de Blanc. Okay. Uh, we like to have uh, mostly Premier Cru and some other Cru that will bring more, more roundness and more um, yeah, creamy character, sort of uh, also fresh flavors that are um, quite interesting in this wine. Okay, so let's sniff. Obviously, obviously yes. Whoa. So it's very fresh. Yeah. This is really what we try to capture uh, in, in the Chardonnay. Rina has, is actually specialized really in the use of Chardonnay grapes. We use a lot of Chardonnay in all of our cuvées. Obviously, this is you know the um, flagship using only Chardonnay grapes. Yeah, for me, Chardonnay has also also have always ripe aromas. Uh, not yeah? necessarily in Champagne. Uh, no? Here, you have I think very citrusy aromas like yeah. you know grapefruit, citrus, um, citron. Okay, yeah. You have like white peach, a bit of pineapple. So you have beautiful freshness. Some like. What I call green spices, like ginger, okay. cardamom, you know, some very refreshing spices. Sort of a floral note as well. Yeah. Uh, white flower. But it's quite, it's fresh, but not aggressive. It's very, uh, you know, very lively. And you oh. see the palate? Because Chardonnay has no tannins, so it's a very uh, delicate, 
but quite flavorful. And I think this is really what uh, Rina is good at, is, is making champagne that are both elegant, refined, light in, tech, in, in structure, yeah. but intense in flavor. And very long. And yeah, quite a good length yeah. with a, a very clean, refreshing finish. Yeah, really fresh. So this wine stays for uh, quite a long time in a bottle, right? The second fermentation, it's like 15 months or do you keep it longer? No, no, we keep it longer. Um, the second fermentation itself, by the way, only takes six to eight weeks yeah of course and then the yeast die and then the, there's a maturation process you yeah. know the yeast being in contact with the wine and that would generally be two years to two years and a half in the bottle okay and uh, just to, for, to explain this is a non vintage means the you make a, like you have like wines for many years yes this is actually a blend Reserve. of three different years together. three different years right we okay. always use a main a main base to which we add um, you know, two previous years, about 25% of reserve wines, that's what they called, all together. And this is really to help having the consistency uh, year after year. Absolutely delicate. Very can, delicate, but yeah. fragrant. And this is really yeah. uh, what we like about this. Uh, so I can uh, recommend, really nice. And I think it is a good start for, mm. yeah? For any day. Okay.